Welcome back, everybody, to the New York Jets franchise here in Madden 22. About to head into week number eight, take on the Miami Dolphins. And I hope you guys enjoyed that wild weekend we just had because, man, games were fantastic. The real NFL playoffs, absolutely craziness. And in reality, I mean, overtime rules definitely need to be changed how can you allow one team just to get it? it's like a baseball game in the playoffs where a team scores in the top of the 10th and then that's it it's over just makes no sense change the playoff rules because that game between the chiefs and bills was absolutely outstanding but let's get back to this so we take on the dolphins here before we hit the bye week and then you see our schedule coming up rams bills that browns game i cannot wait to get going man i want to play that team so badly then go to seattle who's playing well this season back the dolphins Got the Jaguars, a playoff team. The Vikings, the defending Super Bowl champions with Brady at San Francisco. That really remaining schedule down the stretch, see all those road games, is definitely a crazy schedule. And it's going to be interesting. I mean, we're going to obviously going to need this game against Miami, but playing those Bills a couple times down the stretch, it's going to be big. Mock draft number two is out. Like I've said a million times, don't really, I mean, these teams aren't going to be uh, like, I mean, Probably at the top. Now, right now, they're taking the Chargers. Lynn Collins, a quarterback. With Justin Herbert back there, I'm not sure if that's going to be a possibility. Now, the Raiders could take a quarterback. Obviously, we've seen before that this draft is definitely quarterback heavy. Lions could take a quarterback. So, a couple of those teams I could definitely see. I could see the Packers taking a quarterback, depending on what happens with Rodgers. So, that is a definitely possibility. Um, I can see a lot of, le a lot of rush left ends there. It's a big draft. Let's see where we're what they're thinking of that possibly we could take here in mock draft number two eagles taking another wide receiver in the first round uh i don't know about that well that's uh, who knows about that but these all these teams will definitely definitely change it has us taken a tight end matthew boyd at 28 uh i don't know i don't know if we'll a first round pick on a tight end i don't know i think corner might be our top thing into the first round once again maybe corner Right now, the way Jason Marsh is playing, we got Nolan Smith. I don't know if we'll go with a rush end because I think those guys are performing very well. Lamar Reynolds, quarterback at the back end of the first round of Carolina, they are saying. So let's take a look at Matthew Boyd. Uh, six foot six, two forty eight, out of Vanderbilt. He's only twenty one years old. Looks like his physicals are all great and elite. Cannot complain about that. I mean, that's pretty good. But you have to wait till the combine and pro day. A pass block. Okay, B short route, B carrying, C injury is a little bit of concerning. I just think if you have an injury pass, there's just no reason to take a guy in the first round. I know it's a, it's a gamble, but unless it's like a freak injury like Willis McGahee back in the day, that's perfectly fine. But if they're hurt a lot, there's no reason to think about taking it, guys. As we have Ty Key Smith, he has a chance to up his dev grade, up, up, the dev upgrade, Got to hold the Dolphins 150 pass yards or get two plus interception force fumble tackles for loss or sacks. And that is outstanding because Ty Key Smith, in my opinion, has been having a fantastic season. He has really stepped up to be pretty much our best safety on the team. One of the best guys in the secondary. Had a pick six last week. Um, just comes down, heavy hitter. Can knock the ball loose. He has a couple force fumbles this year. So I think that is well deserved and hopefully we can get it to him. Now take a look at this Dolphins receiving core. Still have Will Fuller. They signed former Jet Chase Claypool in the offseason. Still have Jalen Waddell. But then they have Marcus Fowler, 80 overall, rookie. He was taken in the first round. Hidden development, so who knows what he's going to be out of Alabama. They just, I mean, I would take all those receivers out of Alabama as well. But pick number three this past offseason. So this is the Dolphins. I don't know what they're doing. But you can see he hasn't even played. He hasn't played a snap. And they took Rayshon Hooks last year, I believe, in the first round as well. He doesn't have any catches this year. Last year, 20 catches, three touchdowns. Let's see. He was pick 19 last year in the first round. So they have two first-round receivers that have aren't even playing. It makes no sense. Jalen Waddell, the other first-round receiver, he's right now number three, not getting as much playing time. And I checked his contract. That is a guy to watch out for in the offseason because I don't think the Dolphins are going to resign him. I think he's going to hit free agency. Now, we could lose Elijah Moore, and we could just sign Jalen Waddle, and that would be something to bring him into this team, get a little bit of payback for the Dolphins for kind of giving up on him. I think that's something that maybe could happen. We'll see. Um, 
but that's the offseason. It's a little bit further away. As for this Dolphins game, you just you never know. Sometimes we played the Dolphins in the past. Sometimes the games are just you know absolute beatdown. But then what was it a few years ago, or even last year, uh, coming to the final weeks of the season, trying to clinch stuff, and they gave us one heck of a game. It's so those division games. You just never know where you can get. They have so much talent on the defense side of the ball, but they just don't produce. It's definitely a weird, weird team. That's for sure. As for the game plan goal coming in this week, uh, maybe one pick off Tua. I think we can definitely do that. Defensive coordinator game plan, pick them off twice. I guess just keep that. If we're going to do the pick once, we just eh, maybe switch it to sack the quarterback three times. Let's trust in this pass rush to uh, step up. Offensive coordinator, I think we're fine. Shut out Miami. I don't know about a shutout. Uh, we did it to Kansas City, but I'm not sure if we're going to, you know, it's just tough to shut out teams. 450 yards on offense. You know what, I think we can definitely do that. So let's sim through the uh, practice here, make sure nobody is down and we're fully healthy to go in this week before the uh, bye week. Oh, let's see. Oh, they... Walker's definitely a practice squad guy. Don't have to worry about that shoulder strain. He is on the practice squad, not going to be a starter, so don't have to worry about that. Defensively, let's take a look. I think we're going to go. So I think this team is all healthy, ready to go. Trying to continue this win streak. We've bounced back after those two straight losses and uh, with some dominated victories. And let's try to get another one here in Week 8 against a division rival in Miami and hit that bye week on a three-game win streak as we head here to New Jersey here in uh, MetLife Stadium. Sunny. Everything looks good. No weather elements. We got the uh, retro unis on both teams in this ball game. Tell you what, the Dolphins, I would just stick with those retro unis. They are fantastic. Yeah, I, to me, they're they're excellent. These Jets ones really aren't too bad either, but I do like the green helmets. Tell me, tell me what you guys think out there. What do you think is the best uniform in the NFL? Now, the worst uniform, in my opinion, is the Texans. They need a they need a brand overhaul badly. Uh, it's just so it's, I don't know, it's just, it's a terrible uniform, in my opinion. It's just not good. I think they need something new, for sure. But uh, who do you think is the best and the worst uniform out there? Let me know. So here we go, week number eight. Let's get this one going, as Tucker's going to get this one underway, and the Dolphins will receive the ball first. There's Rayshon Hooks back there, just returning kicks, not doing much else. It's just crazy. But here comes Tua in this Miami offense. 11 touchdowns on the season, eight picks. And trying to, you know, get over 500, get back in this division. This is a big game for Miami, no doubt about it. So here we go. First and 10 from the 25-yard line in the backfield. It's going to be Gus Edwards. Brees Hall is going to be out for this ball game. That's Tua looking back, and he's going to be brought down right away by Robert Hardison. Man, what a stretch this guy is having. He is just stepping up, taking advantage of that playing time. But he had two and a half last week. Just a sack to start this ball game. Second and 19. Tua dropping back. Looking. Pressure coming again. Oh, he gets away from two guys and then ends up throwing the ball away. Somehow Tua got away from that one. And luckily it wasn't a safety. But a third and 19 is weird. Just getting constant pressure. Look at the pressure again. Third straight play. This time Quentin Williams says, I don't think so. You're going down. That's going to be a sack. And wow. What a first three plays for this defense. Pressure on all of them. The coverage down the field is good, and that's going to be an interesting thing because this receiving core is good. You know, we got some injuries in the back, you know, in the back secondary, so this is going to be interesting, and that was a good start. As on second and six, speaking of pressure, man, both offensive lines just struggling at the moment. Christian Wilkins gets in there, brings down Willis, and now it's going to bring a third and 15. As this offense has been uh, looking pretty good here the last few weeks. Third and 15, firing, lobbing it up. It's going to be Robinson for the catch. One man to beat, makes the juke move. Continues forward, and he's in for the touchdown. Oh, man, what a pass. I mean, they wave man on man, bringing the blitz. It does not work out in their favor. And I'm telling you what, with his size and kind of the power we've seen the last couple weeks from Reggie Robinson, is he turning into kind of like a Debo Samuel? Maybe we have to start thinking about, you know, using him that way. Debo Samuel type receiver because look at just throwing off guys. He looks fantastic. Touchdown and a 7-0 lead here to start off this ball game. Question is, how can how does Miami answer? Because the first three plays on their offensive side of the ball were not good. 
As they try to get the run game going with Gus Edwards, not too much there as Gray Payton gets through and makes the nice stop. Second and nine, Tua dropping back, looking to throw. More pressure coming, and Brandon Smith on the backer blitz comes in there and brings him down. Man, we, well, there's the goal, three sacks already. Brandon Smith, his third sack on the season. And, man, this is getting, we're getting tons of pressure on this Dolphins defense, but this time, enough time to find Waddle for the catch, beating Ashton Davis in coverage, and that's why... Miami, I know, hey, Claypool's fantastic, so is Will Fuller, but you know, Jalen Waddle could just be a difference maker. Should definitely be using him. First and ten, Tua, pressure again, and this one's going to be caught by Claypool, beating Stingley in coverage. Oh, man, just throwing it up for grabs. We've had so many problems with that in the past, and here once again is, once again, pressure on Tua, but just flings it up. And just hoping your receiver makes a play. And that's exactly, you can see that's just kind of a duck out there. Stingley didn't even go up for it. I don't understand. Why, why aren't you even going up for it? But the Dolphins need a play like that. And they get a big one down to the 11-yard line. Second down and nine now. As Tua looking. More pressure coming. Man, we are getting so much pressure up front. Quentin Williams, his second sack. But Hayward was there. Westbrook was there as well. Our defensive line. What a game so far. Third and 19. Just make sure to play everything in front of it. Nothing over the top. As Tua looking down the field. Even with a three-man rush, the coverage was really good. We get to Tua. He just throws it away. So we'll attempt a field goal here from about, you know, what, 34 yards, 33 yards? Oh, no, 34. It's about 38-yard field goal here. Kick is going to be up, and it will be good. So Miami... Gets the big play from Claypool. They need it because right now, man, we are dominating their offensive line. 4.23 left here in this first quarter. Hand off to Travis Etienne. He picks up around two yards up to the 28-yard line. Jerome Baker there on the stop. So third down and seven. Just a four-man rush. Willis looking. Plenty of time over the middle, and he's got Robinson for the catch. He's just that guy. He's just that receiver over the middle. He's going to make the tough catches. And... He has just really turned into an outstanding receiver. He really has. Second and ten. Pressure coming. Willis is going to get out of there. Using his legs. Gets out of bounds. Picks up 14 yards. Up to the 50-yard line. And that is going to be a Jets first down. So up to the 49-yard line. Here comes I think, a little bit of a spy there with Baker. We're going to throw it up top. Looking for Buckley. Who beats two guys in coverage. And even three with the corner dropping back. And he's down to the one-yard line. And hopefully near the end of the season, down the stretch here, we see more plays to Quincy Buckley because he can be a difference maker too. With that speed, giving him us enough time to throw. Yeah, look at that. He just beats two guys in coverage. And who was that? Howard who dropped back off his own man. Still can't get him. And that is going to be down to the one-yard line. So let's see if we can just put this one in here. We've got Robinson in the backfield. He has been the touchdown maker here in the red zone. And down to this goal line area. Hand this off to Robinson. Gets through. And he's just going to be short. Nice job by the uh, Miami defense to make the stop there. So second down and goal here from this one yard line. I think we're just going to do the same. Back to Robinson. Up the middle this time. Offensive line gets a great push. And that's Robinson's seventh touchdown on the season as he takes the, uh, I guess, the catwalk down there. to take the picture down, right? So he's got seven TDs on the season. Like I said, he is just a beast down the goal line. Look at the push from the offensive line. When you can got, when your offensive line, you got a, you got what two offensive linemen and a tight end in the end zone blocking. I mean that's going to be easy going. So 14-3 lead here, looking pretty dominant here with a minute left in this first quarter. As Tua dropping back to throw, looking over the middle, finds Claypool, and you know Claypool definitely. Um, I guess it's a bit of a revenge game. I and mean, we utilized him perfectly fine. He did very well for us in the years we had him. You know, coming over that trade from Pittsburgh. But just felt like it was time to move on. You know, trust in our other guys. So we'll see as old man Ty Key Smith comes through. Lays the wood on Gus Edwards. And that's a fumble. So that's one forced fumble. We would need at least two with Ty Key Smith. So that's one. Second down and ten. Tua dropping back to throw, going underneath. That's going to be caught by Fuller. And I think he's going to be a tad short. 
Third down and one. I mean, you got Gus Edwards as a good uh, power back, so we'll see what they do here. Third and one. They're going to pass. Tua to the outside. Caught by Claypool. Just cannot give up that much cushion on third and one. I guess just don't want to get beat deep, but still don't want to give up that much. So first and ten now for Tua from the 43-yard line. After that first down, pick up pressure coming. And that's going to be David Hayward coming in for the sack. This rookie's looking pretty good. Now, he's down in most run situations. You know, he's not really, he's getting a few snaps there. You know, you kind of your nickel and dime formations. But, man, he's making some pressure here. He's looking pretty good. I am liking the guys we have up front. I really am. We're looking pretty good. As that's Gidry with the tackle on Gasicki. So this is going to bring up around a 54-yard field goal. Try to put this back to an eight-point ball game. Kick is going to be up. Doesn't have enough, and it does. It is good. So Miami still picks up three, 14-6 ball game. And let's get this offense rolling again. Here with 740 left here in this first half. Second and six. Willis dropping back. Firing underneath. Robinson for the catch. And he's up to the 38-yard line first down. That's only our fifth pass of this ball game here so far. I feel like uh, all, you know, pretty much all Robinson except that Buckley one. As Miami's been on the field a lot, as that's Robinson with the carry. And he's got a first down up to the 46-yard line. Just running over guys. I mean, this is why you kind of keep them a little bit, you know, you rest them a little bit during the regular season in this first half. You know, split the carries up a little bit. Go with the hot hand as Robinson with another good run. But get into that playoff time. He has fresh legs, and you're just going to just – Pound teams down to the ground. That's what you want to do here, you know, when we get to the playoffs. Because I think we're going to make the playoffs. I have trust in us. As on first and ten, we're going to find Buckley. Nice job coming back to the ball. That's a catch down to the three. And right now I have to say everything just seems to be working on the offensive side of the ball. Everything. Even with a little bit of pressure, we're finding guys down the field where it was just a couple weeks ago we were not finding anything. And stuff seems to be working out right now. Second and goal now from the three-yard line. From the pistol, Willis making a few adjustments here at the line. Some blocking protections. Snap it, quick throw. Buckley, wide open, touchdown. And three for three in these drives so far. As this time, it's quick Quincy Buckley's time. They get in for the score. Had two guys there. Could have gone underneath. Uh, who was that to uh, uh, Elijah Moore, but... Just can't cover two guys. And Buckley's right there wide open. And we got the touchdown. 21-6 to score here. 443 left in this first half. See what can uh, what can Miami do? Try to answer back. Underneath. Oh man, Tyke Smith was there. I thought maybe. Maybe pick that one off, but that's gonna be completed. Second down and five now. Two are dropping back to throw. A screen pass. Broken tackle by Benny Snell. And Snell's gonna be tackled down around the 33-yard line. The Dolphins still competing here. You know, they're not going to go away. Only down 15. They have a chance to get a score here before halftime. Get this back to one possession ball game. First and 10. Tua going down again. Look who it is. David Hayward, his second sack of the ball game. We have six sacks here in this first half. We're looking like the Tennessee Titans against Joe Burrow this past weekend. Man. Tua is just getting annihilated. Throws it up once again for grabs. This time, not going to happen as we two guys there, Stingley, Stingley and Ashton Davis, knock that one away. And they can't get anything. Two minutes left here in this first half. Chance to get some more points. Try to get a little bit of sneaky run in there. Does not work out in her favor. Just picking up two there with Ernest Johnson. And it brings up a third and four. But we trust in her offense. And we're going to go to Everett underneath. He's got the first down up to the 48-yard line. Will a 7-8, 158, two touchdowns here in this first half. He has looked like an MVP quarterback here, like we wanted to see. And he throws this one. It's going to be caught by Buckley. Does take a hit at the end. That was really good coverage. But Buckley right there makes the catch. First down, we're down to the 18-yard line. Second and 10. Willis going up top for Robinson. A bit overthrown and complete. A little bit of contact, but nothing there. Third and ten. Willis is going to go underneath the Buckley. Got room to run. He gets out of bounds down to the six-yard line. Javon Holland. It's just tough to keep up with that dude with that speed. It is tough. First and goal. Still have all three of our timeouts here from the six-yard line. Willis looking in the pocket. Plenty of time to throw. Looking, looking. He's just going to take this one himself. He can walk into the end zone for the touchdown. 
and that is a 28-6 lead. We are dominating here in week number eight, this Dolphins team. Malik Willis, this is what we wanted to see. It was a struggle early on in the season, and now we are finally, maybe he's just a little bit more comfortable now with his offense and the guys he's got around him because he is putting up some big numbers now. He is putting up, he's looking like his MVP rookie season. That's what he's looking like right now in the last two to three weeks. 28-6, we go in a half, and we're dominating. Our defensive line is dominating, that's for sure. So let's go around, see what we got going here, see if we can see maybe a Buffalo score, maybe New England, see what they show us. And where are we going here? We're going out to San Francisco. Buffalo taking on the Niners, and the Niners have won 38-28. Bills lose, they got dropped to 4-3. and three. Niners, 5-2, and two, looking pretty good. But the Bills, never count them out. When you got Josh Allen, you just should never count him out. But Quincy Buckley, what a first half. Five catches, 124, got the touchdown. He is looking very, very good. I can't wait to see what his development is. It's got to be close to see what it is. Maybe next week, I think we're close. Well, let's start this second half. Second and 11. Looking underneath, Elijah Moore for the catch. And he breaks off a tackle, breaks off another Elijah Moore. Picks up the first down to the 35-yard line. See, Quentin Williams on the sideline. Getting them all pumped up. That was pretty cool to see. I'd like to see more of that interaction with the teams. Guys get pumped up with plays like that. First and 10, Dearness Johnson with the carry. And he's got a first, close to a first down up to the 42-yard line. So second and three. Now Robbins into the backfield, obviously, with his big lead. Now it's more about running that football. You know, wasting the clock, play that defense, what we've been doing all ball game. And Robinson, first down up to the 41-yard line. You know, we just, just run this ball. Second and three. Once again, this time it's going to be Willis was going to keep it, trying to get around the edge. Holland is there to make the stop. As Dearness Johnson a bit shaken up. So this is going to break up a third down and one. But put Robinson in that backfield, just handing the ball at the offensive line, go to work, start mulling guys. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. First down, man, Jackson Kirkland. Fantastic blocks. He looked like he demolished one guy. And then moved on to the second level as a dislocated shoulder for Dearness Johnson. So he'll be done for this ball game. But this is what you want to see from this offensive line. Just making some great blocks. Look at this. Great pass protection. This ball's thrown and it's picked off by Byron Jones. Yeah. Probably forced that one in. But Jones wasn't even covering there. He just moved off his man and just made a fantastic play. You can see he was covering Elijah Moore underneath. Saw the ball being thrown. And it might have been completed to Buckley. I think it would have been completed. But great play by Byron Jones. Picks it off. So Miami's defense makes a play when they need it. Because we were just going in to make this a 35-6 ball game. Pretty much wrap it up. That would have been it. So now Miami's staying in it. But they got to get down the field here. And they got to put up a touchdown. Up to the 25. That's a good start to Will Fuller. Tua looking down the field. Going up top. Flag on the play. And Stingley's going to pick this one off. I have to see what this flag is. Hopefully he's a holding. As Stingley keeps going, he'll be brought down by Waddle. But, uh, yeah. Those late flags after the pass has been thrown, you just know what it's going to be. Quentin Williams roughing the passer, so the pick is taken away. Give Miami the 15 yards first down up to the 40-yard line. Second and 10 now. Tua dropping back to throw. Oh, no, not again. Stingley makes another great play this time for Waddle, and I think it's the same thing. It is roughing the passer again. And it's Williams again. Jeez. Two roughing the passers on Quentin Williams. Gives them 30 yards now penalties here in this uh, drive, and they're up to the 45-yard line. Tua fires quickly. Claypool for the catch. Breaks off a tackle. Nice job by Davis to bring him down, or Claypool was definitely gone for the touchdown. All right, defense is going to have to step up. You've given them 30 yards in penalties. we got to do something here. It's third and five. And Benny Snell just breaking some tackles off the screen pass. He's got to the 14-yard line. That's a first down. It's now Stingley is shaken up. That is not what we want to see at all. Do you want? Yeah. No, 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 not at all. First and 10. Hand off to Gus Edwards up the middle. Edwards, and he's going to be down at the one-yard line. I guess his knee just hit right before he was over the goal line as Miami trying to put this one in here. 
First and goal, trying to get back into this ball game here from the one-yard line. Edwards in the backfield. They hand off to Edwards up the middle. Easy touchdown. He could just walk in. So Miami gets the turnover, takes advantage. Let's see if they go for two here. Oh, abdominal tear for Stingley. Oh, no. That is a multi-week injury. That is not what you want to see. Two-point conversion. They do go for two. Gasicki just wide open in the back of the end zone. And puts us back to a two-score ball game, 28-14. So Miami trying to switch the momentum back around. See, we, we can just answer right back here ourselves. Second and ten. Go to Buckley underneath. He has the catch close to a first down. I think just a cut. Yeah, third and inches. So we're going to Robinson in the backfield. No doubt about it. Up the middle. He is going to be tackling us right away, but still we'll take it. That's enough for a first down. Move the chains. And we're up to the 35-yard line, now to the 41. Big another third down here for this Miami defense. Trying to get a stop. As Willis back to throw. Looking, plenty of time to throw, and he can't find Elijah Moore, who was open. Incomplete. So Miami's defense stepping up in this third quarter, getting some stops. And now their offense trying to put this back to a one-possession ball game. Trying to put some pressure on us after we had the big lead. Third down and six now for this Miami team. If we can get a stop here. So it's going to be interesting now with Stingley out. As that is going to be a nice stop. They try to read option. It did not work. Levi Wallace comes through for the uh, sack. But yeah, with Stingley out, obviously Gidry moves up. Clay Brooks will move up. I mean, I trust in those guys. I definitely trust in them. First and ten. Robinson with the carry as we move into the fourth quarter. He's got a nice one. Nice carry. That should be a first down. Maybe we just, just continue to hand the ball off to him, the way he's running this ball game. Now we get a little bit of that speedy action this time with ETN. He picks up a good gain around 10 yards, and that's another first down. So, yeah, you bring in Robinson, who just power backs you, and now you bring in ETN, who's got that speed, gets around the edge, tries to make a move, and he's got 14 yards down to the 29-yard line. We're just gashing him in this ball game. We really are. What I mean, they just can't stop us running. They really can't. Third and five. Up to the 24-yard line. Obviously in field goal range. Willis back to throw. Looking. And he's going to find Robinson for the catch. Continue the drive here down to the 14-yard line. And that's going to be another Jets first down. And now down to the 12. So second and eight. If we get a touchdown here, this ball game is probably over. And that's what I think we're going to have here. ETN wide open. Beats Jerome Baker out of the backfield. And we got a touchdown. So that's what Willis' is third of the ball game through the air. Has one on the ground. So what a game for Malik Willis. You can see Travis Etienne just, it's just tough. I mean, Jerome Baker definitely has some speed. But when Etienne just, he knows where he's going. You don't know where he's going. Just the speed disparity there. I mean, not much you can do. Easy touchdown. 34-14 is your score right now. Up three scores over the middle. Miami needs a quick play. And there's Waddle with the catch. And Waddle breaks a tackle. He's up to the 48-yard line. That's what I'm saying. This dude probably will be a free agent in the offseason. Uh, I checked their contract. They have not re-signed him. So I'm telling you, this guy's probably going to be a free agent. That's That could be, you know, obviously we have Robinson. We have Quincy Buckley. You know, if you add in a guy like Waddle, I mean, we could throw the ball a little bit more, obviously. And, man, this offense could be brutal. We could have kind of a Cincinnati Bengals offense. But the guys, they have third and one. They decide to throw the ball. I mean, I guess you have no choice. And coming through, bunch of pressure. Nolan Smith, his third sack. He is just starting to come into his own here with this Jets team. Fourth and 16. Two is just going to have to toss it up. Clay Brooks is back there, and it's going to be picked off. Clay Brooks. Let's get down. No reason to risk anything. He picks it off. Now, obviously, he's going to have more playing time. With uh, Stingley out. And that's your ball game. Pretty much I would say a beat town. 34-14 is going to be your final. And we played really well. Just that one turnover really from Willis. And the one big play to Clay pull down the field. Leading to a field goal earlier. But really, we played fantastic. Third straight game where we've really played well. Complete ball game. And our defensive line up front. <laughs> man. We dominated. Absolutely dominated. 
So that feels good going into the bye week. Will a 17-22, 256 through the air, three touchdowns, added a rushing touchdown of his own. Robinson, 74 yards on the ground, 5.6 a carry. ETN, 5.4 carry. Robinson with the touchdown. Even Brandon Falk had some carries late in the game. But Buckley, 6 for 134 TD. Robinson, 5 for 82 and a touchdown. Travis Etienne adds that touchdown late. But um, hopefully we'll see more games like that from Buckley. But look at this. Look at this defensive front. Two from Quentin Williams. Yeah, look at all the tackles for loss. I'm um, looking for a Tyke Smith as well. He didn't get that. So two for David Hayward. Two for Quentin Williams. One for Nolan Smith. Hardison. Levi Wallace had one. And Brandon Smith. So yeah, that, I, I totally forgot about the dev upgrade. With Tyke Smith, he had the one forced fumble, so he didn't have two of forced fumble or tackles for loss. But take a look at that. Only 143 pass yards for Miami. So we held him under 150. So Tyke Smith should be a superstar dev now. He should. As Buckley has an upgrade here after this ball game. Do we do route runner? I always usually do route runner because if, if you got the speed like he does and you can do some fantastic route runner maybe but also release would be good but we'll stick with the route running one agility one awareness one catch one deep route one medium route he's got to be close so he's what 45 plays away from getting his dev okay so he's close david hayward he is really starting to step up as a rookie he's looking fantastic just uh i guess go run stopper try to make him as complete as possible plus three in block shed one in tackle so that is awesome to see. He's looking at me 6'6", 275. The guy's an absolute beast, and he's playing like it. Antonio Nunn has himself an upgrade. This guy definitely doesn't get enough playing time, but when he does, he just makes plays. So it's, it's the same thing. It's just so tough. We have a lot of guys to try to get the ball to, and not enough plays, that's for sure. So let's take a look at this. Should have gotten it. I think we held him under 150, right? So I think Tyke Smith should, yeah, there we go. Tyke Smith, superstar dev. We did it the hard way, that's for sure. <laughs> we didn't get the two of one or the other. We did it the hard way. We got him under 150, and Tyke Smith is now a superstar dev. That is awesome. He definitely deserves it. He's the mainstay in that back, you know, in the back secondary there. Because Ashton Davis, I'm not sure what we're going to do. We'll see what happens in the offseason. But the big news, Stingley out for five weeks with the abdominal tear. But Wagner should be back. So we'll have to hit the bye week. Wagner will be back. So that is awesome to see. But, um, yeah, no Stingley. So he'll be out technically four weeks once we hit this bye. And as for trades or anything, I don't think we're going to do anything. I think we're just going to let it go and um, trust in our guys. I think that's the real thing. I, mean, I don't see any... Reason why we should do anything. I, I trust in everybody in our secondary, and I think we'll be good. But uh, hit this bye week, and then we'll take on the Rams in week number 10. And to try to continue this excellent win streak that we got going on, because right now um, we're playing well. Nice three-game win streak. Cannot complain in the division lead. Uh, we got a couple division games coming up with the Bills. That Browns game in week 12 is going to be huge. So, uh Hopefully we just continue this and maybe get that one seat again and get a little bit of revenge in the playoffs and maybe get to the Super Bowl. It's a little bit further away, but still, I think the way we're playing right now, this team has uh, definitely got a chance for that. But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for all the support. I really do appreciate it. If you could please leave a like, comment, subscribe. I will see you in the next one. You guys have a good one. Bye-bye.